Decoy Lakes here and we're actually on the Six Island Lake today. We've just hooked a great fish here on the maggot feeder. The reason we're here today is to show you everything you need to know about maggot feeder fishing on commercials and look at him. He is a great F1 to start the day. I'll hold him up to you now. He must be a four pound F1. I'll hold him up here. Look at him. He is a great fish to start the day in. Beautiful. Right, we'll unlock him, put him in there, and then we'll tell you everything you need to know about maggot feeder fishing on commercials. Right, there's a few different reasons why a maggot feeder is so good. And it offers a few different presentations over a method feeder, a hybrid feeder. It just sinks to the bottom, doesn't really have a lot of activity, a few micros around in a little pile. Now a maggot feeder, when you chuck it in like I'm about to here, it lets maggots off on the way through. The hook length is a little bit longer. So a few mats, so there's a little bit of a fall. Gives you time to catch one on the drop. Just like that, just cast them in there. And when it actually is on the bottom, maggots come out all the time. So it's obviously, there's a lot of activity going on. And obviously I think that draws more fish in. So that's one reason why maggot feed is so good. The next reason maggot feed is so good here at Decoy, Lots of the fish are getting caught on maggots and with it being really flat land around decoy, it can get really, really windy and sometimes pole fishing for the carp isn't viable. Or you're chucking further than a pole line and that's when a maggot feeder can really come into its own because you're giving the fish what they want to eat and it's a presentation that's still on the bottom and you're going to catch them really well on that. Now today, we've just started to this left-hand little island, shall we say, We've got a right hand island to try later if we want to. We can have a few different swims on the go because these winter carp, you catch a few and then they move around and you need to keep casting to, you need to keep moving around to find them. I just had a little liner then, I thought it was going to be on. So yeah, we can chuck in front of ourselves later on. We can chuck to the two little islands. So we've got a few different options to try later on. And let's see if we can catch a few more of these carp and F1s. I've just hooked another, literally my second cast of the day. This feels like a nice fish. Might be, I'm not sure, not sure if it's carp or an F1. But yeah, we're just chucking into the, the left hand island as we speak. Literally two in two casts now this is. So obviously all the time while we catch them on the one spot, we'll just keep going at it. But like I say, it probably won't be too long before they move and then we'll have to follow them to a different spot and all the bites are coming really fast today just shows they must be watching those maggots down it's another f1 look at him yeah they must be watching their maggots down to the bottom and they're just having it really fast that was in the water less than a minute that one there we are it's probably two or three pound this one a little bit smaller than the last one and he's up right down the throat, really wanted the maggots. And that's another great reason to use a maggot feed. And maggots, they just catch you. Just catch you more F1. F1s love maggots. So I think that's another great reason to use a maggot feeder on these kind of commercials. Commercials that have F1s in, a maggot feeder is a great option. Right, let's cast the same spot and see if we can get another. Right, so we're on our third cast of the day now. We're going to cast back to the spot we were casting. And I'd just like to run you through the rod rest and the positions they're in and why they're in that position while we cast out now. Just going to load them up there if I don't get caught on my leg. Just going to... Right, just whack this out to the same spot and then I'll run you through it. Obviously, we're casting to the left there. Just going to sink the line now. So obviously my rod rest is smack bang in front of me now. That creates a little bit of an angle to the left hand point there. 
which I think angled really good. Oh, hooked a fish straight away there. Unbelievable sport this. So yeah, I've got the rod rest right in front of me. Create a little bit of an angle so you don't get broke on the take. If you have your rod rest pointing directly at where you're fishing, you can get broke on the take sometimes. So you want a little bit of an angle in your rod rest. And I've also got a back rest now. You might be wondering why I have a back rest. And the reason is, another massive F1, look at him. He's huge, he is. He's an absolute monster F1. But yeah, the back rest here, just holds the rod in position. You don't want to be holding your rod all the time because when you get some liners, you might end up striking at the liners and you don't want to do that. You don't want to spook these fish. They're easily spooked in the winter. The water is clear. So having a back rest just means your hands off the rod. You have a few seconds of watching the rod go off before you pick your rod up. And yeah, it just means everything's more settled. You don't want to be making loads of unnecessary casts. So having your rod on a back rest and a front rest is absolutely vital in my opinion for these commercials. Right, so I'm casting out again. Obviously gonna go back to the same spot because catching really well just there. And yeah, I'm just gonna put my rod in position now. You can see the angle. I've got a little bit of an angle to the left hand point so I'm not gonna get broke on the take. I've got it in a back rest. Everything's in position, set for a bite now. Rod tips nice and low to the water, lines all sunk. I actually have my tip slightly under the water because I don't want, oh, had a liner then straight away. I like it all set. Don't like my line blowing around on, on the top. I like everything nice and sunk. It's all in position. It's all slightly away from me, so I'm not gonna pick up the liners. And it gives me a few seconds so I can watch my rod proper go off the rest bite before I pick it up and wind the fish in. So I'm now going to run you through my maggot feeder setup and to start with I'm going to start with the rod. It's a 10 foot superior, short rod because you're not chucking very far on most of these commercials. Here at Decoy and Six Islands we're only chucking 20 metres and this rod will do the job perfectly. Matching to that I've actually got a Centris 520 reel. Now it's the reel I use for everything, just a power horse of a reel never ever lets me down and I've actually got six pounds sinking feeder mono on the reel. In the summer I use eight pound because you know you're catching massive weights and the fish fight really hard but now it's winter time six pound is nice the fish don't really fight too much so cast nicer on six pound the line sinks nicer on six pounds so that's what I use. Now running down to the actual business end of the rig I've actually threaded on a, a waggler swivel now this is what my feeder actually attaches to but I've actually got another waggler link in a bit of a loop now the waggler swivel with my, my actual feeder on slides over that, slides over that knot, but when you actually get a bite, it just creates a bit of a bolt effect, and I think you hook a few more fish fishing like that, and it's still completely free running, so it can slide right up the line like that. Now, the actual hook length, I've actually only got an 013 power line hook length, 12 inches long to a 16 GPM hook. Now, a foot long, I don't want it really long, I don't want it far away from the feeder, I still want my hook bait close to my feeder if you like but the foot long it's just about a happy medium because it has a little bit of a fall on the way down sometimes you can catch them just as you chuck in now the actual feeder i have a few different sizes of these but they're adrenaline maggot feeder they're loaded at the bottom they come with a really small weight in to begin with but you can get some really big ones and they get bigger weights so you can change the weights from the little ones onto these and you get a bit bigger weight on these so they cast a bit further and I've got them in small, medium and large and I've actually just got a medium on to start with today. So that's my maggot feeder rod, now let's try and catch some. One thing that's really, really important is reading your liners. Now, this left hand line, it's gone a little bit dead. So what's really good about a maggot feeder is the maggots crawl away so they don't leave massive trails of bait. Now I've been cast into the left hand point and this next chuck, I think I'm actually going to chuck to the right hand point, little island thing, just to have a a little go there and it won't take long because obviously the maggots they fall through the water out the feed and the hook bait sinks slowly so it'll only take a few chucks there to know if there's any there now that's the reason i've got an ounce tip in is you can see every little indication you do get and i have it slightly set under the water a little or level with the water with the line sunk so the line doesn't blow in the wind and your feeder moves out of position 
and it just means you can see your bites a little bit easier. If you have your rod out of the water, up a little bit, it's a lot, a lot harder to read your liners and reading liners in winter, I think is really, really important because it un lets you understand if there's any fish in your peg. Now, I think I caught those few early F1s and a few carp on the left-hand point and I think I need, a, need to move. So I think I'm going to wind it in now and I'm going to have a chuck to the right-hand point and see if we get one there. Just going to cast in now, just putting my double maggot on the hook. Going to fill the feeder up now. When you actually are filling up a maggot feeder, it's important not to completely overload it. I load it about three quarters full, so the cap area of it is empty. So the maggots can come out the feeder quite freely. If you ram it, they can't really very easily come out. Now, before I do cast out a maggot feeder, it's really important just to have a little dip under the water. And it stops the maggots actually coming out on the cast. Now, just cast there. Lovely closer to the right hand island and we'll just have a little go there but yeah the dip in the feeder under the water is really really important as it just just stops all the maggots coming out on the cast and because you don't want your maggots spread everywhere obviously you want them where your feeder's landing around your hook bait and that three quarters load is really important so now they can drop out as the feeder's landed and crawl out easy and you get a quicker release of the bait like that all right, the rod's all set now, ready for a ready for a little go on this right hand point. We'll see if we can get one there. If we don't, we'll just go back to the left hand point where we did catch a few to start with. Or if that one still dies, we can just try straight in front of us. Got loads of options with the maggot feeder. All right, so we've had a great day here at Decoy Lakes, and I've just chucked back on the left hand line, and I've just got one to finish the day on. It feels like a great cart, this. So if you put all the little things I've told you, the three quarters filling the feeder, the dipping it under the water, the casting around and the actual rig itself, you'll definitely put some fish in the net this winter. And if you're close and local to decoy, definitely check the place out. It's absolutely full of fish. And this is a great carp to finish on. We've actually just put on a bigger maggot feeder as well. So we've even feeding more bait now and getting even more fish into the peg. And it's really come alive now. This is a massive carp, this. Proper giving me a little bit of a run around. It's important to take your time with fish like this because the nice fish and What's really amazing about the winter and how clear these lakes are, you can see them so far under the water. But yeah, he's about to pop up now. Lovely carp, him. Nice mirror carp to fend on. See if he can get his head up. Wind in a little bit. He's still going. So yeah, that bigger feeder probably holds double the amount of maggots into what we're putting in earlier. It's definitely brought some more fish into our peg. Really, really nice to have a few different sizes of maggot feeder as well, so you can play around. This one's probably holding 100 maggots now, and the other one was holding about 50. So double the amount of bait and probably double the amount of fish to go with it. We can finally get this one's head up. Here we go. Nice mirror to end the day. The big fish he is. So yeah, I hope you learnt lots from this video and you can put more carp in your net just like this one.